I saw a great article by Michael Schneider. He's the author of the Economic Collapse blog. Not really a happy place, if you know what I mean, or you know, if you want to cheer yourself up. I don't recommend going to it, but it does have great information. The top 21 signs that this could be a long, hot summer for the global financial system. What are those 21 signs? Let's get into them right now. What's up, Fabian for Liberty, Internet Anchorman TV. So Michael Schneider, I uh, actually have exchanged a few emails with him. He, he posted some of my videos to his, uh, to his blog, um, and he gets it, right? This is a guy who gets it, has a great blog, and puts together great articles that are warning you about what is coming. And many of you know what is coming. That's why in the, in the last documentary film that I put together, I tried to put it together in, in a realistically optimistic way. Because I've always said I'm an optimist, right? And I, I believe that the future will always be better. And I do believe that. that. I mean, it doesn't mean that it's gonna be cheerful times always. But remember, there's two economies. Always remember there are two economies. Your individual economy, how you personally are doing, and the global economy, the banker-run, corrupted, crony, capitalist economy that is crumbling. Because that one crumbled, it doesn't mean yours needs to crumble. In fact, yours can prosper as that one is crumbling. And there's all kinds of ways you can do that. And I'm not going to get into that now. I'm going to get into the 21 signs. Because I think people need to know this material. And you need to know it because within those signs, I think is where there is opportunity. Opportunity for you and your own economy to thrive. I want to clarify before I get into one of these points, one of the comments that I made in that how-to documentary, which was where you're getting your advice from. Are you getting it from someone, you know, other YouTubers that are in their parents' basement? And let me just say, there's a lot of people living in their parents' basement that are good, honest, decent people that are working hard and aren't losers, aren't, you know, they're, they're good people. What I meant by that was where are you getting your advice from when it comes to your own personal economy, your own investments, how you're thinking about creating more wealth. Because I'll tell you, this time between now and the collapse and after, one of the most important things that you can do that I never hear mentioned in any of these get prepared for what's coming videos is how you can make yourself more valuable in this new economy. Because make no, make no mistake, to why I quoted Eric Hoffer in the beginning of that documentary. It's for the learned. It's the people that continue, continue to learn about stuff, whether it's a new trade, whether it's a new asset class or investment vehicle that you could be part of, whether it's a new business opportunity or a new problem that you can solve that you can monetize. The future is for those people, people that are just sitting around thinking that, hey, it's going to be like it always was. There's going to be job security or the fact that I had this trade, you know, nothing will change. I'll continue. Let me tell you, I hate to break it to you, but you're wrong. You're going to lose bad. You're also going to lose really bad if you think government's going to take care of you. If you're a little bit older and you're thinking, hey, Social Security's going to, you know, I paid my dues. Yeah, you're right. You paid your dues. But maybe what you didn't factor in was you had a criminal government that stole the money and is going to get ready to renegotiate with you. In Europe, they're now telling people they're going to have to work till they're 80 years old. I have family in Spain. They're old. They're like in their late 60s. They worked their whole life. They paid into a system, and now their benefits are being cut. They don't know what to do. We need to send them money. I want to let you know that everything that happens in your life is something you need to take responsibility for. And if you're a believer in Ron Paul and his message of individual liberty, then you must believe by, I mean, you have to. It's the next reasonable step that if you believe in individual liberty, you must believe that everything that happens to you you must take 100% personal responsibility for it. You must also take 100% personal responsibility for the fact that you are in charge of whatever happens, your destiny. I mean, do you want to sacrifice that and leave that up to the Goldman Sachs gang and the JP Morgans and Jamie Dimons that your future is, in, is, is based on what they do to you? Or do you want to say, no, you know what? Screw you. I'm going to be a man. I'm going to chart my own path. Because that's what I think people need to do. 
And I think that's the only way we survive. What I meant by that comment was just that. There's a lot of people on YouTube cover the same niche that I'm doing. And I don't know what they're doing in their own personal lives. I know that I'm on the front lines of global financial markets every single day. I'm on the front lines of, uh, of, of commercial real estate markets every single day. And you know, my economy is doing great, you know, um, because I'm working at it every single day. And that's what you need to do. I want to now get to these 21 signs, because these 21 signs, I think, are important. Uh, I think what happened last week and last Friday, gold, silver were booming. Um, the market down over 250 plus points is indicative of where you know people are beginning to get it. Also, Paul Craig Roberts has an amazing article breaking it down better than I've ever seen, really, quite frankly, any other analyst. And it's called Collapse at Hand. Everybody, in fact, not only is everybody saying it, but people that I know who have extremely wealthy clientele, they're all getting ready for something. They're all getting their money ready for either possible opportunities, but they're getting ready for what they believe is a huge market correction or possibly the fall of, of, of the Eurozone. One of the, you, you, something, someone else who's getting ready, according to these 21 signs, there are rumors that major financial institutions are canceling employee vacations in anticipation of major financial crises this summer. The following were a couple of tweets uh, by an article by Kenneth Shorgan Jr. Todd Harrison tweeted that hearing at PIMCO asked employees to cancel vacations to have quote unquote all hands on deck for a Lehman style tail event. Then uh, another person commented, I heard the same thing, but I also heard that the same for some of the people over at JP Morgan. Heard it today at a hedge fund luncheon as well. Number two was the Bank of International Settlements is warning, warning that global lending is contracting at the fastest pace since the 2008 financial crisis. Banks don't trust each other because they don't trust each other's balance sheets. There's no trust in the system. It's the number one. It's the number one thing needed in any market is trust. If you don't trust the counterparty, then how can you do business with them? That's why jailing and possible banker execution was, is needed. It's the only way we instill trust. If we were doing that, if we were putting these people on trial, then the other people globally would say, okay, well, hey, they're purging the bad people, they're in jail. They can't do that because the very criminals that are responsible for this are the ones that have to prop up this fraud and milk it for as long as they can. Here's a few other points. Unemployment at the Eurozone Brand new all-time high. Number four, government of Portugal just announced it will be bailing out three more banks. Ask yourself, how much longer can that go out, go on, and how long have you been hearing about the bailing out of the banks? I mean, it's, not, it's been going on for four years now. They keep bailing out more and more banks. Where are they getting the money to do it? And the list goes on. I'll post this article. Stocks in Japan hit a 28-year low on Monday. Uh, U.S. job growth in May was well below expectations, and unemployment has increased to 8.2%, uh, if you even believe those numbers. It's estimated that there are $273 billion of failed real estate loans in Spanish banking system alone. Now, $273 billion of failed real estate loans in the Spanish banking system. Think about what a huge number that is and what that means to Spanish banks. In real estate in America, there is estimates between 1.5 trillion to maybe 2 trillion in just commercial debt coming due in the next five years, a majority of it underwater, uh, and those people can't repay those loans. In housing, estimates range between 2 million to 10 million homes in America underwater in likelihood of there being a default. In states like Florida, almost half a million homes are in foreclosure, and 45% of homes in Florida in uh, underwater. They owe more than, they, they, than, they, than their value of their homes. So the real estate bubble is uh, nowhere near over. Um, in fact, it's, it's going to continue to have problems as long as people can't find work, and as long as inflation pressures are hitting the consumer with essential foods and gas and all that other stuff that they need to survive. I'll be posting both of these articles. I think it's important to know 
what's happening, being realistically optimistic, but being realistic about the economy, about what's happening, so that you can plan accordingly and understand it's up to you. At the end of the day, it's up to you, right? Spain gets out of the euro, Greece goes out of the euro, the effects will be tremendous and they'll be felt here in America in a significant way. But if you're plugging ahead, if you're doing everything you can, society is still gonna continue. Things will still continue, markets will still continue. And it just depends how many problems you're solving in that market and that'll be a result directly in how much wealth you have, how much wealth you create. That's just the bottom line. Like it or not, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, it doesn't matter if you believe me, it's just the truth, right? Just decide what you want to do. I'm your internet anchor man, Fabian for Liberty. Thanks for watching. I'm out.